Hi there, I'm Casey Worley, and welcome to another episode of The Community Show. On today's Community Show, we're going to be talking about what's going on, featuring news and events from Floyd, Withville, and surrounding areas. Next, on Sports Action, we're going to be talking about sports from Floyd County, George Wythe, and Fort Chiswell High Schools. And then finally, on Something to Chat About, I was recently able to interview Karen Day with Plenty about local events that she has going on. And then finally, on Something to Chat About, Lenise Anderson is going to have her second healthy living topic for you. So stay tuned. Now for today's What's Going On, beginning with With News, sponsored by the Withville Enterprise. Despite the head of a cow on the town seal, there will not be any head of cattle on North 4th Street in Withville after town council denied a special exemption permit for property between Trimo Drive and Fairfield Lane. Thomas Klein had sought to rezone 15 acres of residential district land. Next, Progress Park's Lot 24 is ready after nearly four years and $24 million of work. State and county officials described the plus size lot measuring one mile long by a half a mile wide with new water and sewer lines and new fiber optic capability as a super, super site. The state is actively marketing the spot, but state officials said to be patient because it could take time to find the right tenant. Councilmember Jackie King reported work on the new Wounded Warrior Monument in Withers Park will begin within the next couple of months. She said $5,400 has been raised towards the $10,000 cost. The monument was the idea of local Wounded Warrior Project members from Withville. It will feature insignias of all the military branches, including those of prisoners of war and missing in action, as well as a stone depiction of a male and female soldier in combat. The monument will be located in the vicinity of the War Memorial in Withers Park. Withville residents will soon have a system to alert them of an impending emergency. It has been discussed and studied for more than two years after tornadoes threatened the area. Following a report Monday night, Withville Town Council agreed to endorse the purchase and installation of the system. Council is forwarding the recommendation to the Wythe County Board of Supervisors and Rural Retreat Town Council the town partners in the new Emergency Communication Center. According to Councilman Tommy Hunley, a member of the Public Works Committee, the state has awarded contracts to a company named Everbridge to install several notification systems. Everbridge specializes in providing quick and reliable communications for governments, educational institutions, and corporations. The third Saturday in September, which is this Saturday, September 21st, Downtown Withville will be hopping with activity as the first Downtown Withville Festival, the Dickey Boyles Memorial Cruise Inn, is held. This is the first event to be hosted by the Downtown Withville Revitalization Committee. It will be held from 4 to 9 p.m. and admission is free for all activities. Classic and antique car collectors and enthusiasts from throughout the region will line up on Main Street from both directions to showcase their beautiful vehicles. A variety of vendors will set up to offer products, services, or information about their business. A centrally located beer and wine garden will feature local and regional beer, wine, and specialty brews. Local food vendors will also be located throughout the festival area. Music will feature Beach Night Band, whose music is based on the Carolina Beach music tradition, which includes soul, R&B, disco, blues, boogie, and other memorable oldies. Performing on Taswell Street will be Badunka Funk, <laughs> whose music is described as funk, soul, groove, jam, and features music by artists such as James Brown, Stevie Wonder, The Average White Band, Curtis Mayfield, and more. A couple of bluegrass bands are also expected to perform in pop-up or jam-type fashion at different locations. There will also be children's activities in the Withville Farmer's Market. 
These activities will feature blow up inflatables, face painting, and other hands on activities. The Cruise Inn is in honor and memory of the late Dickie Boyles, a longtime employee of the Town of Withville Department of Parks and Recreation. Boyles was very involved in classic and antique car collection and was known and loved throughout the area. Many local businesses have donated door prizes, services, and other monetary contributions to this event, so you definitely want to check this out. For the latest information regarding the event, go to the organization's Facebook page at facebook.com slash downtownwithville. Moving on to Floyd news, Oxford Street should be the top priority of town roadways. That was the message delivered at the town council meeting last Thursday. Council had advertised for citizen input on which streets and roads in town needed repairs. During the citizen comment period at last week's meeting, Oxford Street was the only one to generate public comment. Billy Weitzenfeld told council members Oxford is used as a shortcut. There is a lot of foot traffic, joggers, bikes, and it's an accident waiting to happen. Next, an investigation is continuing after 36 one-pot meth labs were discovered in two locations on September 4th. No arrests have yet been made in this, but Floyd County Sheriff Shannon Zeman told the press that a citizen report resulted in the response of the New River Valley Ta Drug Task Force to the 700 block of Talford Road in Willis at 9 o'clock a.m. 14 used one-pot meth labs and 18 used generators had been dumped on a piece of property that was for sale. The labs were found in a wooded area with residences, including children, on either side. At 10.21 that morning, the drug task force members were also called to the county transfer station on Storker Knob Road. There, 22 one-pot meth labs were found. The sheriff explained transfer station employees had been moving trash that had been dumped when some of the bottles started smoking. The fire department was also called to the scene. Cleanup crews worked at both locations. <clears throat> Next, the use of school buses in parking lots by Floyd Fest this was discussed and drew more questions at last Monday's school board meeting. During the public comment period, Becky Howe said this usage was inappropriate. She said she reviewed the policy manual and was unable to find the appropriate policy. Perhaps one hasn't been written yet, she said. She said she did find two related policies, however. Howe said the special use of school bus policy states that there should be prior approval and it must be in accordance with regulations pertaining to field trips. It also allows for use by governmental agencies for public purposes, in which case there should be reimbursement for cost, both fixed and variable. Howe said Floyd Fest's situation, the heavy rains and muds that impacted parking and transportation, was not a crisis, but rather an intervention. Floyd Fest organizers have been recognized for their entrepreneurial skills. Surely they can figure out a way to transport patrons without using school buses, she said. It has been reported that the school system received a profit of $9,000 for use of the buses, she noted. To declare a profit without factoring in wear and tear on buses is misleading. Finally, Governor Bob McDonnell announced that Floyd County received $5,000 from the Virginia Tourism Corporation Marketing Leverage Grant Fund Program. Governor McDonnell had, had earlier increased funding for the program as part of his administration's efforts to increase economic development through tourism. In total, the VTC awarded more than $980,000 for 54 tourism marketing projects across the state to help increase visitation and revenue for Virginia's localities through tourism. The Floyd County Tourism Development Council received a $5,000 grant for its project, the Floyd County Official Tourism website visit Floyd, Virginia. The FCTDC partnered with Hotel Floyd and Chateau Morissette Winery to supply $6,500 in matching funds for the project. This project includes website development and support for the development of a comprehensive tourism marketing plan for the county. This coming Saturday, September 21st, the Floyd Livestock and County Fair will be held at 209 Fox Street in Floyd. The the event will be a full day of exhibits, live music, heritage art demonstrations, games, and other activities like livestock shows, children's games, clogging, cakewalks, ag olympics, a petting zoo, concessions, and much more. To find out more about this event, go to Floyd, Virginia, 
VA, floydvafair.com. And finally, the Blue Ridge Orchid Society is presenting their Fall Orchid Show, November 1st through the 3rd, in the Advance Auto Parts Atrium at Center in the Square in Roanoke, Virginia. This is an American Orchid Society judge show displaying beautiful orchids. Vendors will have plants and supplies for sale, and society members will be on hand to help answer questions and share advice. The theme is the flight of orchids. The fall blooming orchids are fascinating and vivid. They will have vendors and societies from North Carolina and Virginia. For more information, contact Irene Brock at 540-774-9021 or visit Blue Ridge Orchid Society VA.org. And that's all for today's What's Going On. Stay tuned as next we will be discussing sports for today's sports action. Floyd Express Market at 609 East Main Street in Floyd is your local convenience store serving Floyd County since 1989. They offer easy access to both gas and diesel pumps and is a Virginia lottery retailer. Their deli, open daily, specializes in barbecue sandwiches, hot dogs, and homemade biscuits with ham, sausage, tenderloin, steak, chicken, and gravy. Floyd Express Market is open Sunday through Thursday, 5.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 5.30 a.m. to midnight. Chantilly Farm is an outdoor special events venue located in the beautiful mountains of Floyd, Virginia. From small gatherings to large festivals, Chantilly Farm is the perfect venue for outdoor events of any size. Chantilly is home to the annual Bluegrass Festival, the Floyd Auto Fair, Floyd Oktoberfest, and many other great events. Contact us to learn more about planning your next outdoor event at Chantilly Farm. for today's sports action, beginning with football. On Friday, September 20th, the Fort Chiswold High School football team will be playing against James River at 7.30 p.m. at Fort Chiswold Field. Also, Floyd County will be taking on George Wythe at Floyd County High School beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. And this game will be aired live on Citizens Channel 2023. So check out that as we provide this great opportunity for local sports. Moving on to cross country, the cross country teams for Floyd County, George Wythe, and Fort Chisel will all be running at Marion Senior at Hungry Mother State Park on Saturday, September 21st, beginning at 8.30 a.m. Moving on to golf, the Floyd County golf team will take on the Fort Chisel golf team at Fort Chisel on September 19th at 4 p.m. The George Wythe Maroon golf team concludes the season on September 24th at 4.15 with a match against Holson and Rural Retreat. In volleyball, George Wythe takes on Fort Chiswell for a tournament game at 7.30 p.m. on September 24th. The Floyd County girls volleyball team will be taking on Fort Chiswell at that same invitational right after the Fort Chiswell George Wythe game. The game time is to be announced. Stay tuned to CCTV for all updated info. And that's all for today's sports action. Stay tuned. Up next, we'll bring you something to chat about. Here at Floyd Pharmacy, we know you. We know your doctor, and we're there in the case of an emergency. We keep a complete record of all the prescriptions you take, which can help alert our pharmacist to a potential problematic drug, allergy, or food interaction. We even offer free local delivery and fast, friendly service. While you're here, take time to check out our gift shop as we now carry items from Willow Tree and we can service your photo needs with our two Kodak machines. At Floyd Pharmacy, we want to be more than just your local pharmacy. We want you to feel at home here too. Go Buffaloes! When you put good people, good conversation, and good food in one place, what do you get? The Blue Ridge Restaurant in Floyd, of course. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, come in and taste Southern home cooking at its best. Check out our daily specials and meet your friends at the place that specializes in just what you're hungry for. You're going to love our specialty desserts and comfort food, too. We're just across the street from the courthouse in Floyd, and we're open seven days a week. Walk in hungry and leave with a smile at the Blue Ridge Restaurant on East Main Street in Floyd. And 
now for something to chat about. Recently, I was able to chat with Karen Day with Plenty in Floyd as she discussed efforts for the local community garden as well as Plenty Good free lunch, which happens on Wednesdays in the summer. And then after that, I will be providing a, another healthy living tip by Lanice Anderson. So right now, we're going to show you the interview that I did with Karen Day as well as some of the members of the Plenty Good free lunch. Today we're here with Karen Day and uh, we are at Plenty's Plenty Good free lunch and we're going to talk with her just about what exactly Plenty is and what they do. So first question I have for you is what exactly is Plenty? <laughs> Plenty is a grassroots organization that nourishes community and feeds hungry neighbors by growing and sharing food. Okay and do you have partnerships in the county or is it just... Yes, yes. A lot of farmers and gardeners will bring us their surplus produce. You know how when your garden's growing sometimes you have too much of something. Right. So they bring that to us and we share it with folks who don't have transportation in the county. We have about eight different routes that volunteers, all of us are volunteers, um, that they take out to folks who a lot of them are living alone and they used to garden but now they don't, aren't, aren't able to, so now they get some fresh produce. Great, and uh, do you work outside of the county any or is it mainly in Floyd County? It's just in Floyd County. Okay, and uh, I know that you all do something with the uh, schools here in Floyd. What did, tell me something about that. That's right, we've started school gardens at Floyd Elementary and Willis Elementary and we teach uh, kindergartners, first graders and second graders, about how to grow vegetables and they taste things and get excited about the way that things grow just right, they can see it. Great, great. And, and how do we get involved, like as far as volunteering and then as far as people coming into your lunch, how do, how do you get involved in that? Anyone who shows up for lunch is welcome. We, we always set plenty of tables so there's room for everyone. We also have a food bank if people need to come in for food and uh, there's not qualifying information so you can just come in and we'll help you out if you're in a pinch. Um, we have a website, it's plentylocal.org and if you want to volunteer you can look there for some of the opportunities of things we're doing or you can call me at 357-5657. Great, and so I think that we're gonna go and get some lunch today, and, and thank you for your time. Good, I hope you'll talk to some of the cooks, volunteer cooks who have been helping today, and our setup crew, and some of our guests. Here comes Ann now with some kale salad. So I hear that you're, you're the head cook for Plenty today. today. Yes. Um, how long have you been do, uh, working with Plenty? This summer. Okay. And what do, you, what do you like most about it? The food is fresh and from scratch. And they're um, surplus foods from other places. And we are helping people learn how to cook on a budget <laughs> and use basic things. For instance, this salad is massaged kale with peaches, blueberries, and almonds. Great. All right. Thank you. And what's your favorite lunch that you've had? Um, the bread. Bread. And maybe the broccoli salad. Okay. And everything's good. And if you like anything you like, just enjoy it. Great. Thank you. You're welcome, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Donovan. And how long have you been been doing stuff with Plenty? So far, so good. We come here at nine o'clock, get the tables ready, clean up, put the towels on, flowers, and everything. At 12 o'clock we eat and that's it. Great, and are you excited for the launch? Oh yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Slaughter Supermarket, located at 536 Floyd Highway South in Floyd, is a Galaxy Food Center and is open seven days a week to serve you. They carry a large selection of quality fresh meats, groceries, and produce. Their delicatessen is open daily, providing lunch specials, deli meats and cheeses, salads, sandwiches, and baked goods. Also, check out Slaughter's Garden Center and Christmas Shop, where you'll find a great selection of trees, shrubs, annuals, and perennials. Slaughter Supermarket is open Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Sundays 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Hi, this is Lenise Anderson with another healthy living tip for you. Have you been experiencing symptoms like unusual fatigue, dry skin, depression, weight gain, or trouble losing weight, foggy headedness? Are you just feeling that something isn't quite right? If so, your thyroid could be giving you the blues. A visit to the doctor's office might show that your thyroid is in great working order, but your symptoms are screaming, something is not quite right. Your thyroid might be functionally imbalanced, but pathologically, it might be fine. In other words, the imbalance doesn't show up in the blood test. Here's a quick and simple way that you can check to see if your thyroid might be the underlying cause to some of your problems. Take your underarm or basal temperature every morning for 10 days. This should be done first thing in the morning before your feet even touch the floor. A basal thermometer is best, but a digital thermometer will do. Make sure you record the temperature every day. A temperature that is consistently below 97.5 degrees suggests the possibility that your thyroid may be under functioning. If you suspect that your thyroid isn't quite working the way it needs to be, or you're just tired of being tired, go and see your local health practitioner. By making changes to your diet and lifestyle behaviors, you'll soon be on your way to regaining your health and finding your get up and go. Symptoms are your body's way of telling you that something has gone awry. This is Lenise Anderson encouraging you to listen to what your body is saying and take heed to the information that it's giving you. After all, it's your health, it's your choice, and it's your life.